Rolling. All right. So to start off with, I always use the same eight outputs, and these are these Digizign 192 IO number six. All right. So I come out all eight of these, and I go in a very specific order. Um, what is that order? Let me think about it for a moment. We, I start off, I use the 1176 line in, left and right. So number two goes to the right. Number three, I go to the UA LA2A in. For four, I go to the uh, DBX376 uh, line in, it's over here. Wait, let me line up that thing. Uh, number five and six, I do the tube tech. So five goes to tube tech left. Six goes to tube tech right. Seven and eight, I do the uh, distressors. So seven, I send to this where it says EMP in. That stands for Empirical Labs, which yeah. is the maker. Eight, what I do is I go to this finalizer line in left. And then you bring because it back there. Yeah. in the rolling rack, it is moved from the finalizer to that extra uh, distressor unit. Yeah. So that's actually the top distressor. And then I send them all back the same way. So I'll take uh, finalizer left out, and we're going to go backwards here. We're going to go to Digidesign, 1 and 2, number 6, IO, in. And I'm going to go in channel 8 which is right below the number 48, for whatever reason that is. Right. Uh, next down the line, 7. And we're working back here, so left, right. So here we have the right tube tech. Let's go into 6. The left tube tech. Let's go into 5. Um, what was next? The 370, wait, no. Yeah, the 376 goes into 4. The, um, over here, back to LA-2A, out, is going into three. And then the first two channels are the 1176, left and right. So right goes into two, left goes into one. So every time I come in here to mix, I set all those exact same patches because I already have an I.O. setting okay, in Pro Tools for all that. that matches that. All right, cool. Oh, it looks like people are in here. Yeah, we'll just finish this because this will actually be something kind of useful that we can yeah. share with other people. So I'm going to pull up uh, one of my sessions. <clears throat> and I'm going to walk you through my I.O. settings so show it on the screen. Um, all right, so it's actually not even set up, so that's good. But what you do is you pull up your I.O. settings. I'm going to import my studio, my outboard inserts, this is my patch. Okay. Delete, unuse, import, insert delays, yes, yes. So right now I'm on output. So you do the exact same thing on output and input. So you scroll over to you find 192 IO number six. That's what was on the patch bay. Mm -hmm. And you see all of these, these first eight squares are the analog outputs. So those okay. are the ones that we're using. Not the digital. Not the digital. Okay. And e on each of these, you see the mono sends yeah. And each of them responds to the exact same ones that I patched them to. So all you do is just make a mono send. I'll make a new one just for fun. So I'm going to say new path. It's going to show up way at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So say I wanted this to be analog one. I would just check right here. Well, first you make sure it's mono. You just draw on that box, so you have a mono analog one, and all you do is you name it, so you want to say what it shows up to. And this, as you remember, is the, uh, the 1176 one. So this is the left side of the 1176 compressor. Okay. So that's just an extra one. And I already did that, as you can see, for all those, those eight units that I like to use a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that one I just made. So I'm going to go delete path, but that's how you make a new one. You do the same thing for the inputs so that they come back into the Pro Tools the same way. So as you see here, you just make eight new um, sends. You check them all to mono, and you name them accordingly so you can figure out what they are easily. Yeah. And then you should have it. Just hit OK. On your tracks, to use these, um, what I do is I make a new... 
say for just one example, I would make a new audio track on my mix window. I would have taken this is the track say I want to send to it, so I would do new send to such as something the Tube Tech channel one. Make sure that's up, and then on my new track, we'll call it Tube Tech return you would take the input of it and make that tube tech one that's the input patch we made this is the output patch we made so we send it we get it back okay you record and input and enable it i'm going to solo these two tracks so we only hear those and that's going in the tube tech yeah, i'm going to turn this on um and we're just going to real quick test it out to make sure it works hope well So right there, mm -hmm. you have, if you look over here, I don't know what I should do. see the meter's balancing, so it's getting there, and I know it's coming back because I can hear the filtering, because yeah. it's um, not delay compensated. So if I turn the original one down and make sure that this is pre-fader, I'm only hearing the compressed one right now. So there you go. And all you do is you just record on your new track. I don't know what I should do. And that's your compressed sound. And you do that for your whole track. And what I usually do is I'll do eight at a time. So I'll like run eight different tracks through eight different outboard gears. And yeah, I'll bounce them all at the same time so that you don't spend 10 years doing it. So right. there you have it. Sweet.